Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a solo hot tent adventure in the pouring rain. So as you guys can see, the tent is totally soaked. I'm fairly wet, but my sleeping gear is nice and dry. So I have this stored in my backpack underneath of the rain fly. It is gonna stay inside of there in the stuff sack until later this evening, as well as my sleeping pad, because I'm most likely gonna be in and out of the tent and I don't want to get any of that gear wet. So. Regular viewers, first of all, you probably recognize this tent and you're probably wondering why am I using it. New viewers, you have no idea what I'm talking about. So this tent is 100% garbage. It is a piece of crap. Now I have a video explaining why this is a piece of crap. I will put the link down in the video description. If you wish to learn more about it, click on that link and watch the video. To regular viewers, as you can notice, I have added a stove jack to the tent. I've also made myself a nice ground sheet and I've tossed out the inner tent into the garbage. Basically, I put the money into the tent. It was total garbage and not usable. So I decided to make it into something that I can use, which is a freestanding hot tent. However, I do not recommend anybody purchase this and I strongly caution you against it. If you're looking for a freestanding hot tent hiking option, I will be coming up with a video very soon on all of the tent conversions that I have done and the models that I recommend and don't recommend. So that aside, it is raining. This is a hot tent trip. We need firewood. So let's go get some firewood. All right guys, it is raining pretty steady outside right now. So I've ducked inside, got my wool hoodie pulled off. I've got this door partially shut and it's time to get the stove going. So I've got quite a bit of wood processed right now and I ran out and collected some birch bark off a tree as well. So I've cut up some small pieces, basically hardwood kindling and I've left some rounds and I've got some halves and quarters and whatnot, just basic splitting of wood. 
everything on the right side of the stove is a total mess right now so i'm going to worry about that later on and i am going to have to collect more wood but i want to hold off and wait for the rain to possibly let up but right now i've got to get this going in order to cook up some coffee and get some warmth inside of the tent and uh, everything that is wet basically i'm just going to hang up in the in the tent later on to dry so right now i currently have a thermometer hanging in here and it is reading 9.9 .9 degrees celsius right now dangling over there I'll, I'll give you guys the temperature later on this evening too once it drops and then once we get the inside and outside temperature i'll let you guys know that and uh, i did order an inside outside thermometer for this winter so i'll be able to put the probe outside of the tent and keep the main unit inside that way i can let you guys know the temperature really easily as we hot tent the winter away so i'm going to get this loaded up i've got some nice dry birch bark some nice dry wood and that's very important during the daytime to get that going because the wood that I collect later on is likely going to be wet and I'm going to need a hot coal base and a stove to dry out some of that wood to then make it burnable. So I'm going to get this loaded up, throw a match in there, and we will have a fire rather quickly. All right guys, so the fire's burning really nice and strong right now. It's funny because the entire tent is soaking wet. So what you're seeing right now is steam coming off the tent. That's not smoke. All this water on the front of the tent is actually drying, condensing into steam. So that's pretty interesting. This is definitely going to be a cozy evening tonight. Now I will mention that I have burned the stove in this tent many times and I'm not worried about any failure points. I've done my testing at home and I'm two thumbs up on it right now. So this is steam, not smoke, don't worry. Uh, I am gonna need to get some wood in here though because it's burning through the kindling rather quickly. So let's load in some hardwood. I do have a bottle of water with me, just the one bottle as I am at a lake. So I'm gonna go and refill this after I empty it out. But right now let's get a kettle of water on the stove and basically make up some coffee from inside the tent. And then I'll be able to sit here in the doorway with an epic view out at the lake and the rain. So I'm gonna make up some hot coffee.
All right, guys. Well, I've got my hot cup of coffee on the go right now. I've got nice dry area to sit. I've got the heat coming out of the stove. That is awesome how much heat is rolling out of that. Uh, update on the temperature while I'm sitting here enjoying my coffee. So outside it is 8 degrees Celsius and inside it is 19.2 degrees. Now I just brought the thermometer in about five minutes ago. I had it set outside. So that is a big temperature difference and the temperature is still rising on that thermometer. I've got the door to the tent wide open as well and it is definitely roasty toasty warm in here. So that's the beauty of having a hot tent on a rainy day. Even though we don't really need the heat to stay warm, it's nice to be able to sit here out of a giant jacket. I've just got a nice hoodie on or a sweater, not even a hoodie. And uh, it's just nice to sit here in the cold with the door open and a nice hot bubble. I've got all kinds of firewood in here, so I do still need to organize my firewood area because that's going to drive me nuts. Um, I like everything in the tent to be nice and orderly. So I'm going to take some time and straighten that out once I'm done my coffee. But that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Enjoy this hot cup of coffee. Beautiful view of the lake getting rained on out the window. Or out the door, I should say. And uh, I'm just going to relax for a minute. So cheers, guys. Coffee time. All right, guys, I'm all finished up with my coffee. I've straightened out the firewood situation inside of the tent, and I even cut up a few more pieces of firewood. So coming outside right now, the rain is letting up slightly, and it is getting closer to the evening. However, everything out here is just really cold and really damp. It is now down to plus six degrees Celsius outside, so I can actually feel the cold air starting to set in. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is not even bother with trying to do the whole fire pit out here and gather more firewood and get even more wet. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just cook everything inside of the tent right on the wood stove. That seems to be the best option for tonight. So what I do need to do is run down to the lake and collect some water in my kettle. That'll be drinking water for later on. I'm just going to set it on top of the stove, let it boil. And then when it cools down, I could transfer it into my uh, plastic bottle or into my French press or just leave it in the kettle. So let's run down to the lake and go grab some water. All right, guys, well, it is getting later in the evening and where we are coming up to winter time, it's getting darker earlier as well. So looking outside, it is getting very dark. It's actually almost nightfall, probably within the next hour and a half. So I'm gonna get this pot boiled up rather quickly. As soon as it's boiled, I'm gonna pull it off and set it off to the side. And then I'm gonna start on supper right away. So I am gonna be cooking inside on the wood stove. And what I brought for supper is some ready-made rice and a big old piece of steak. The steak is still wrapped up in my clothing, but as we are rolling into wintertime, I could have just left it out. It's actually cold enough that it won't go bad. So inside of the tent, it does need to be wrapped up because it is currently, it is now 18 degrees Celsius inside of the tent. So definitely too hot to have steak in the open. But what I'm going to be doing 
is I'm gonna be seasoning it with my spice kit. And I wanna cover something because I am gonna be using a frying pan. However, this is not actually a frying pan. This has been generating a lot of questions on the channel as to what it is, where I got it from. It is completely titanium. However, it is just a Boundless Voyage titanium plate that I got off of Amazon. The handle is actually reclaimed from a titanium grill that was sent to me and I accidentally slammed my tailgate of my Durango on it and it totally destroyed the grill. However, the handle was personalized for me, Lone Wolf 902, and after staring at it for many weeks, I finally came up with an idea, basically, just drill a hole, put a screw in it, and make myself a removable titanium handle for my plate, turning it into a frying pan. And I just kinda take my spoon, the little slots in the spoon, and I put that on the back of the nut, and that loosens it or tightens it so then I can take the handle off and stow it away. So no, this is not a frying pan that you could purchase. This is just something that I made and I really do enjoy DIY projects, reclaiming pieces of gear, kind of modifying things such as this tent. And this is one of those pieces. So no, this is not a frying pan that you could purchase. So what I'm gonna be doing is exactly that cooking. I'm just gonna wait for this to boil. It's gonna take a few minutes. And then I wanna get my steak in the pan and get some seasoning on it and start slow cooking it over the, the stove. I'm gonna damp it way down, do a nice slow cook on it. And then uh, bring my rice together and have a nice supper right here in the doorway of the tent. Okay guys, so supper is just about ready. That steak is smelling incredible right now. So I just took it off. I'm gonna let it rest for a moment. It looks like it's cooked. So this tent reeks of fresh steak. I will say that it smells like garlic and pepper and steak. The reason why I'm mentioning that is because I brought the trail cam with me again this evening. So I have a tree or two picked out and it looks like the, the angle from that tree will kind of cover the whole tent area. And if we get something coming in camp tonight, looking for that smell, the trail cam should pick it up. So 
We've yet to catch something on the trail cam, guys, and that is kind of a statement of not every campsite or every camp area has wild animals that come into it. So I am literally out in the middle of nowhere. So all the camping I do on my channel is way in the back country, and I've yet to catch a single animal on my trail camera. So all those people out there that are worried about wildlife coming in towards your tent, just because you're in the woods doesn't mean that they're all gonna come looking for you because often it's actually really rare to have wildlife come in close to your tent while you're there, even with food smelling, but it does happen. It does happen around the world. It's just not as common as you think it is. All the times that it doesn't happen really, really greatly outweighs the times that it does happen, to be totally honest. But we will find out tonight what comes around. I'm just bringing my rice up the temp. This is pre-cooked rice, but I've got some water in there and I just wanna kind of make it soft and make it a little bit warmer, kind of break up the chunks and that'll go with my steak really well. So we'll let that come up the temp, let the steak rest. But I am excited for that trail cam tonight because like I said, I do have an area to set it up. And uh, hopefully, who knows, we might get something on camera, we might not. But that's one thing I did want to mention is not every single time you have the best opportunity. Like you've got scent, you've got way out in the middle of nowheres, you've got wildlife in the area. All the stars can align. That doesn't mean wildlife's actually going to come in close to your tent. So. We will find out tonight, but I'm going to let that come up the temp. I'm going to cut into my steak and I'm going to start enjoying supper, guys. All right, so supper is totally finished. I've already done my cleanup of dishes and all that nasty stuff. And I've got a little bit of coffee left in my cup, so I might as well get that warmed up, have a nice hot drink. I am gonna make up another hot drink later on. The stove is damped down right now. That glass is totally cleaned off. It is really, really hot, just coals in there right now. So I'm gonna save my firewood for a little later on tonight when it is actually cold out. The inside temperature right now is 14.3 degrees Celsius. And I bet once I shut this door and get wood in there, I bet it's gonna go to 25, possibly even 30 degrees Celsius inside of the tent. We will find out later on this evening, but I do got my light set up just ahead. I've got my USB light bulb up here. Kind of just getting it squared away right now, making sure this cable's not dangling in my face. So I've routed it through the carabiner that's holding my thermometer. That looks like that's gonna work really well. And the rain is still coming down, so hopefully we get dumped on tonight. I would really love a thunder or lightning storm. I know that's probably pushing it a little far, but it would be nice. So I'm gonna finish cleaning up. I got a little bit more to do. I've got all the wood area figured out. I'm not gonna inflate my air pad yet because I am still in and out of the tent, and I don't wanna pop it. My sleeping bag is all ready to go. Everything is squared away. I just wanna make sure this end of the tent is ready because I'm not gonna be messing around with it later on this evening. And I like everything organized so then when morning rolls around, it's simple as light the stove and start morning routine. So I'll catch up with you guys in a few minutes.
All right, so I'm going to get the trail cam set up and I'm going to have to pitch it rather high above my head just to make sure that it is in line with the tent where it is at a higher elevation than the camera. So I'm just going to strap this in really quick, do a few test shots and see what is in frame and what is caught in the sensors. And then I'm going to shut it off until nightfall because I don't want to burn all the batteries or fill the card with me walking around camp. When it is really dark out and I do make my way inside for bed, then I'll come back out and I'll arm the camera and have it so it'll capture images. So I'm just gonna strap this in really nice and tight and do some test footage right now just to make sure everything's good. We'll turn that on, do a countdown and it will start collecting images every eight seconds is what I have it set for clean off the lens, and we'll go walk around the tent and gather some test images. All right, well, it's that time in the evening to crawl inside, get warm, get dry, and start relaxing. So the wood stove is burning very nicely right now. I've got my boots set off to the side. I can already see those steaming out the water. So those will be nice and warm and dry come morning time. I've got my air pad inflated. Now there is one thing I do want to mention. First of all, the pad that I'm using is a Thermarest NeoWare X-Therm Max. It is 77 inches long and 30 inches wide. I went with the largest X-Therm that I could because I use this in the winter time with no tarp or no tent. I just throw it down on the snow or the ice and I go to sleep with my sleeping bag and that's it. So I wanted something big enough that I wasn't gonna roll off of in the middle of the night. Now the thing that I wanna mention with this is the stove is rocking out a lot of heat and I can feel it on the back of my hand. So I'm gonna scoop my pad down towards the foot end of the tent another six inches. So just be very cautious if you have very expensive air pads and you're near stove. Be very careful because the stoves will get hot enough to actually melt the pad and especially with your body weight on it, it will make that area nice and hot and it'll burst out so I'm gonna move downwards but this is definitely a very comfortable mattress I love this and one other thing I should mention is I never rely on my stove when I go to bed I always let it go out and I rely on my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag to keep me warm I never count on the wood stove two reasons one it's a lot of firewood to cut and it takes up a lot of valuable time and me enjoying the outdoors and two when I go to sleep I want to go to sleep. I don't want to load a wood stove. So all this wood over here, I'll probably load in maybe five or six more pieces while I'm in here lounging. And then I'll use the rest in the morning to relight the fire to make breakfast and warm up the tent. So I am going to be watching two movies this evening. It's only about seven o'clock right now and it's getting darker earlier where we are in winter time. So it's seven o'clock. I've got a few more hours to go to watch some movies. I've got them downloaded on my phone. So I'm gonna get that set up over here and I've got some snacks inside of the tent. The trail camera is on and recording right now and we'll check that first thing in the morning to see if anything did arrive in camp. But uh, right now I'm gonna scoop my pad downwards. I want to get the camera put away. I just wanted to jump inside, give you guys the layout of the tent, and tell you guys what I'm going to be up to. So good night guys, and I'll see you first thing in the morning for coffee.
Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful, crisp and cold morning out here today. So sitting right next to the wood stove, it is roasty, nice and warm. And the outside temperature this morning was negative one degree Celsius. The inside temperature right now is 13 and a half degrees Celsius. Even with the door wide open with the wood stove going, it is nice and warm in here. So I do have my hot cup of coffee on the go right now. I'm going to enjoy that. The sun is coming up across the lake. And uh, don't let the sun fool you because it is still cold outside. But the steam rolling off the water is pretty awesome to look at right out the front door. So I've already gone and retrieved the trail camera. Just wiping off some of the water here. And uh, let's have a look and see if we got anything on camera. Now last night there were a lot of noises and it was a lot of acorns falling out of the tree just pounding on the top of the tent so I'm not really sure what to think here but I'll cycle through the images so here's some images of me last night setting it up test shots uh, okay no that was backwards sorry that was this morning me getting out so last night I can see me going towards the tent I see the light on I see the door shutting me walking away from the camera so it does pick up very very well I actually got a raindrop or a, an acorn streaking through the sky because the shutter was too slow um, let's go back to where I was inside of the tent here okay so nothing outside nothing outside guys it looks like another bust we cannot get any wildlife on the camera <laughs> camping way out in the middle of nowhere this is ridiculous so it's just it seems like if I don't bring the camera something will come around and then when I do bring it nothing comes around so it's just a matter of time before we catch something but uh, maybe I'll throw some of these images up on the screen so you guys can see exactly what I see um, there's nothing walking around a camp and I've got a very very wide angle here showing a lot of the, the lower area of the camp spot the, the fire pit plus up here towards the tent there is nothing in camp. So that answers that. <laughs> uh, now mind you, it was a rather rainy night last night. It rained for probably till about 1 a.m. because I watched movies and then I woke up because an acorn just pounded on the tent and the wind started blowing. It was raining a little bit and the acorns just started banging on the roof of the tent. Uh, so yeah, it, it was quite noisy last night. The rain did stop probably at around 1, 1 though. I noticed that it kind of went silent after that and the winds let up. So that explains the blue sky and sunshine this morning, but it's unfortunate we didn't catch anything, but we're going to keep pressing on and keep bringing it because one time we are going to catch something. So, and that was cooking steak in the tent that was having all kinds of food and snacks in here. Uh, the tent reeks of coffee beans. I've got chocolate cognac flavored coffee beans that I've been grinding fresh. So there's a lot of scent in the tent from that. And uh, well, no, no animals. So we're gonna try it again next time. But for right now, I'm gonna enjoy my hot cup of coffee with this beautiful lakefront view. Beautiful hot stove rolling right into my leg. Whew, my boots were nice and warm this morning. I put them right next to the stove before I put my feet in there. That's definitely awesome. So coffee time and then morning routine. Well guys, the sunshine did not last very long. It has already clouded over and I can feel the cold coming in a little bit more with that sunshine gone. So I'm just opening up my backpack here. I left it outside last night underneath the rain fly. And one thing that I brought with me that I totally even forgot about and never even got to use was my downfill insulated pants. So I'm a little bummed out about that, but they are still totally dry, which is awesome. The outside of the backpack towards the top is a little wet 
and there are ice crystals all over it. I mean, that it got cold last night, I'll tell you that, but there's ice all around the outside of the tent, all over my backpack, so it definitely got cold. But uh, right now, I've got my leather gloves inside, so I'm gonna start dismantling the stove. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna pack up my inside stuff, and then I can kind of pack up in the warm. I feel that's probably the best bet. So I'm gonna jump inside and uh, start packing up my pad, my sleeping bag, and all that stuff, and then I can slowly load it into the backpack. Hopefully it does not rain. The clouds are quite large and they are rolling in very, very fast. So it actually looks like it may rain again today. So I'm gonna try and get this done swiftly. So I gotta jump inside, deflate that, get that packed up and then load one thing in at a time and then we'll break down the stove and take care of that. Okay guys, so I'm now to the stage where I've got to get everything into the backpack and I'm going to stop for just a moment because this is a perfect opportunity to show you guys how I pack my backpack on a hot tenting trip. And this is something that has been popping up a lot in the comment section, not only on my channel but on many other channels, is non-hot tenters and people that are less educated about hot tenting and the gear involved in it don't think that everything fits inside of the backpack. And that is totally not the case. So I'm going to show you guys in real time. I'm just going to get all my kettles and pots inside of the stuff sacks and rotate the camera over to where the sun's not blasting too hard. And then I'm going to show you guys in real time how to get everything inside of the backpack at a 40 liter size. And you can go much smaller depending on your tent choice. But today I'm going to get everything, including my down bag, everything here. I'm going to show you in real time how to get everything into the backpack and pack at a 40 liter size. All right, so this part is going to be a little bit lengthy, but bear with me because I feel that this is very important information for anybody getting into hot tenting or looking at minimizing their pack size. So I've just put all my titanium cookware inside of the drawstring bags. I've got my coffee container and my thermometer and a few other small things inside of the kettle because that is dead space. So you want to take up some space there. The wood stove, I'm gonna get packed away first because I never bring a hydration bladder. I find that those are a huge gimmick in the hiking world. Why not just bring a plastic water bottle? So that's what I do, just bring a bottle instead of a bladder, which leaves my hydration sleeve totally wide open. And that's generally where I put my wood stove. So I'm just gonna fold this down flat, get that tab pushed in there. Okay, get this guy. Fold it up. The glass panel and the solid wall panel, they go inside of the stove. The top goes on top and I actually leave my damper piece attached to the stove instead of taking it off and reassembling it every single time. I'm then going to put the compression strap on it and this helps keep everything secure from banging around in the backpack. So, and this is a mini stove, by the way, guys. This is the T-Brick Mini from Pomali, if you're wondering the size. So it is a mini stove, but you can do this with a larger stove as well. It just slides right in your backpack. So I've got the pipe here. Uh, let's get the stove in first. So what I like to do is take the damper piece, make sure those slides don't slide out. I got the damper piece pointing upwards. I'm gonna put it down towards the bottom of the backpack. Set that in there, very, very first item. Second item is going to be my down sleeping bag. This is a negative 18 degrees Celsius sleeping bag. If I take this out of the stuff sack, it will actually compress much smaller and that'll allow me to work it around different angles. For today, I actually need it to be a blocked size, a fixed shape to take up a little bit more room. So what I'm going to do next is I've got the entire tent right here all packaged up. I'm going to slide that down in between the stove. 
So basically I've got the stove here and I've got the tent next to it. Then I'm gonna take my air pad and I'm gonna put it at the very top of the backpack. My down pants, I'm gonna put that just above the stove and, and the air pad kind of in between. Now I need to get the sleeping bag in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zip the backpack shut because it has a front window and I might as well get the rain fly jammed in there too because it's not raining yet. So we'll get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna stand the backpack up and right now it is fixed at a 40 liter height where this is a roll top backpack. I'm just gonna unclick this and unroll it. And what I'm gonna do now is jam the sleeping bag in that huge void that is right here in the stuff sack. So you gotta be gentle when doing this when you don't have the stove in a compression sack because there are sharp edges on it. So what I'm gonna do where I'm going home today is I'm actually just gonna take it out of the stuff sack, guys. So I'll show you what I mean about lofting it up in the backpack. I can just jam it way down in there and it will fill any shape of void that is left in the backpack and it will be variable. So I can pack it in tighter or I can leave it nice and loose. Now we've got the empty stuff sack. I'll just cram that in there. And we've got a fairly rounded backpack right off the bat. So what I like to do now is I like to get the stove pipe on the side of the backpack. Sometimes I carry this in inside the backpack. Sometimes I do it outside. Now where I've got the sleeping bag outside of the stuff sack and the pipe is just burned last night, so it is a little bit dirty. I don't wanna have that inside ruining my sleeping bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just simply gonna put it on the outside in this little bottle holder, jam that down inside of there, lock it in with one of these straps, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. It's in there fairly tight, so usually stays right there. And then what I'm gonna do is put my saw in the same spot on the other side. So this is a Boreal 24 inch saw. And this will just slide right down in there nice and snug, really nice and tight. And then I take one of the straps and I run it through the loops on the saw bag just to make sure that the saw does not fall out. So I'll run that through, toggle that in. So there we are right now, the backpack, pipe, saw. I got some things on the outside that I didn't have out there yesterday. Gloves, I always take my leather gloves and I slide them right down in this outer compartment. That way they're easy for me to grab. And I tighten up the toggle, pack that in there so nothing's falling out and nothing's getting snagged. So now we have our titanium kettle and I should mention my, my battery bank, my flashlights and all that stuff are in the side pockets right now, the backpack and sorry, one side. So they're in one side pocket and this side pocket is right where I'm gonna put my coffee kit. The battery bank itself is actually in the hydration sleeve to the backpack. So that just slides right down inside of it and that keeps it nice and orderly. My coffee kit, grinder, spoon, fork, all that stuff, pack in the side. Now I've got my French press and my cup. So these two pieces together. I'm simply going to, I believe that's it actually. So what I'm gonna do is put that on top and I'm gonna take the kettle, place that on top. And my plastic water bottle is in the bottom of the backpack as well. I probably should have showed that, but that is down there. Now I could roll the backpack down totally flat just like that and that is a very small so that's probably pushing about 40 35 liters right around there but what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach inside and I'm going to pull my sleeping bag up to take up more room on purpose so I'm just going to loft up the sleeping bag get that nice and lofty so it kind of gives that shape and then I'm going to put my kettle on top my pot on top and I'm going to roll it down to where I feel it's firm enough to kind of walk without it bouncing all over the place. And that right there is the 40 liter mark. So I'm just going to toggle that in, toggle this in. Hands are cold too because it is rather chilly out today. And I'll tighten these up after, but there you guys can see a 40 liter backpack. This is a 40 to 60 expandable, so it does come all the way up to here. But that is everything inside except for my filming gear, which is in a small camera bag that I've had to carry on my shoulder and my tripod in my hands. But that is everything right there inside of the backpack. So you could pack a hot tent depending on what tent you bring, even smaller. The tent that I got today is a really big tent. If you have a teepee style tent, those pack down even smaller. 
I've actually gone hot tent camping with a 25 liter backpack in the middle of winter, negative 15 degrees Celsius. So this should help you guys out in showing you that having a good quality air mattress and a very good quality sleeping bag, whether you have a wood stove or not, you can stay totally warm, negative 15, negative 20, negative 25 degrees Celsius with a small loadout. You don't need a gigantic backpack. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out getting into it or looking at micro kind of compacting your kit just a little bit. Okay guys, so with everything packed away and ready to go, there's one more thing I should mention. I have three pieces of firewood left over from last night and this morning. So I burned up everything except for these three pieces. So that should give you guys an idea of how much wood I went through. I didn't need to go through all of it. It was more for comfort and more for cooking, but that is what I went through. That's what I have left. The tent spot is totally cleaned up. There's a little bit of birch bark that I'm just gonna kind of push off to the side. But other than that, everything is nice and orderly just the way it should be. The backpack is packed and ready to go. I hope the little demonstration of showing how I get everything in there helped you guys out. Um, my base layer pants I'm actually wearing right now as well as my other sweater. So my clothing's all on my body except for a change of socks that are in there as well. And all the other smaller knick-knack pieces that I missed, they're inside of little compartments here and there. So everything is in here, no problem. And I recommend trying it out, guys. If you, if you have a smaller backpack, try and pack what you need. Get your stove, get your tent, your sleeping pad, your sleeping bag, and then go from there, whatever else you can get to fit, pack it. So. With all that said, I'm ready to hit the trail. So peace out guys, drop your questions and comments down in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next adventure.